tendency. And uh, I'm sure that will continue, uh, contribute to your, uh, to your education and to your department. When this invitation had, has been made to me, um, I thought uh, on the topic, on the possible topic uh, to present you, what a poor sociologist can talk uh, in, in, a, in a language department. Um, uh, personally, uh, I, am, I am convinced that um, studies uh, on multidisciplinary uh, fields are much more fruitful, much more uh, productive, and the exchanges with uh, other disciplines that are uh, that ours um, is um, is a, is opening a large perspective for uh, every one of us. Uh, I had uh, some uh, very uh, enriching uh, experiences with musicologists, for example, in my in some publications or some collaborations. Uh, or other disciplines, uh, it was very fruitful. So um, it is a great pleasure for me uh, to, 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 to talk here, uh, to, to meet you here. And I decided to, um, to talk um, about life's pleasures, but not uh, in our uh, time, because in our time, as COVID-19 has uh, showed us very frighteningly, um, the, the consumption society and its pleasures uh, has an end, has a, has a tragic end. And so uh, I invite you not to, to think about our time, but um, uh, um, the tulips era, uh, at the beginning of 18th century of Ottoman Empire, of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, why I, uh, I prefer such a title? Because I believe as a sociologist, I'm not a, a historian. I'm not a, a literary critic. No, I'm not a musicologist, uh, though I have a, a proximity, uh, an intellectual proximity to musicology. Um, uh, <clears throat> I think that um, the modernization process in Turkey is a complex, dialectical, and uh, not, uh, this is not a, a, a process uh, which can be explained by too much cliched, too much um, uh, reduct, um, uh, um, reductionist uh, schemas. So um, um, I presuppose, I hypothesize that um, the, the tulips era or the beginning of the 18th century is the beginning of a complex um, uh, process of modernization. What I mean by modernization I think I will have the occasion to to uh, to open it to explain it uh, during my presentation. So um, I will first uh, try to share my screen to show you some slides. Unfortunately, I cannot do it uh, full screen. Uh, indeed, I I don't like. Uh, such view, but I cannot manage it. Uh, excuse me for uh, for this technical uh, um, failure. No problem. Thank you. So, uh, as a belittled and caricatured image of modern lifestyle imitation, the tulips era, 1718, 1730, is mostly presented by the Turkish conservative historiography as a symbol of excessive adoration for European culture in Turkey. Accordingly, all the imagery and discourse describing that specific period of Ottoman history are conceptualized as a set of imitative practices of an urban elite aiming to transpose 
the modern life into a social context which has neither economic conditions nor cultural values fitting to such a superficial transformation. At least this is the highly profilerated discourse which became an undoubtedly accepted a priori among the representatives of the ideology of the Ottoman superiority connoting an Islamic power. Naturally, an Ottoman Empire image, which is both sublimed as ideal and reduced to an Islamic holy war and conquest activity, has always tended to valorize the periods of political strength as an ideal political and cultural state, um, instead of considering history as a dialectical process. Consequently, the dominant nar narrative of Ottoman history by conservative historians emphasizes the 16th century, the wonderful century, as the ideal form of the empire, uh, given that it was the era of the climax of Ottoman power, yet it's also the beginning of its decline. Since the political power is the only criterion for such a perception of history, the period starting from the 17th century is not referred by this conservative point of view as a source of pride. Nevertheless, contrary to the weakening of its political power, the Ottoman Empire entered in a period of social change during which an urban life rose. The Tulips era is the result of a politically destabilized but culturally enriched social context following military campaigns that were ended by defeats and territory losses as a quest of relative peace and stability. Meanwhile, at the end of the 17th century, the Ottoman world had become a pointed attraction for several European voyagers. From the first decades of the 18th century on, also the Ottoman states felt the need to explore other countries and cultures for understanding what went wrong. These reciprocal contacts gave rise to a multitude of exchanges which helped the development of re relatively complex and accelerated life tempo, particularly in the big cities. Portuary, port cities, as Istanbul, Salonik, um, uh, uh, Izmir, of course. At the dawn of the 18th century, following the first observations made by Ottoman voyagers to Europe, and uh, under the socio-psychologic need to pass to a period of stability, a series of urbanistic moments began during the reign of Sultan Ahmed III, mostly orchestrated by the Prime Minister Nevşehirli Ibrahim Pasha. Thus began a period of urban planning and construction according to the rational criteria and a cultural milieu has emerged with it. This is the Tulips era, which represents, in sociological sense, a tendency to modern values which is a result of the need to transform a long-lasting sociopolitical inertia. The analyze the specific and dominantly ill-perceived period of Ottoman history as an opposite and alternative sociological reading, a scene through which it is possible to depict the signs of modernization in values, mentalities, and psyches, as well as in material dimension and of the social life. Shortly, we assert that the Tulips era is the crystallization and the beginning of the modernization process in uh, Ottoman Empire, on, in the Ottoman Empire. Although the 17th century was a period of political disorder, uncertainty of the sources of power, and a general tendency of decline 
in economic and organizational aspects in Ottoman social life, it presents a series of contradictions and oscillations, despite few reformist moments launched and partially applied by some political elites, such as uh, Tarhonca Ahmet Pasha or the Köprülü family, etc. The unequilibrated state of the budget remained more or less unchanged until the total dissolution of the empire at the beginning of the 20th century. The 17th century of the Ottoman Empire seems to be a multifaceted prism through which opposite forces and inconsistent uh, images refracted. Partial military successes have been followed by important defeats while the political life undergone an unstable trajectory. Especially from the end of the century on, a period of general decline has escalated and gave rise to the first signs of territorial and political dismantling. Meanwhile, some reformist ideas uh, uh, among the political elite have grown, though they couldn't become decisive enough until the 18th century since they have been pushed back by a block of resistance in the same state elites circle. Niazi Berkes, the renowned Turkish sociologist, analyzes this polarization as a quest of dissensus about the founding ideology of the Ottoman Empire, while on the one hand, a group of elites have the need to adapt the state to the changing world through reforms giving rise to scientific inquiry, technological in innovation, and thus social progress. On the other hand, a dominant group of conservatives insisted to remain attached to the fundamental principles of the state. The order of the universe, Nizam Alem, which is created by God, is the reason of being of the state. If the latter remains conform to his principles, its life will be endless. Devleti abed müddet. This basic conception favors the necessity of an unchanging structure in social life as well as in political sphere. The inevitable rise of uh, Europe as a capitalist force, which triggered out, triggered out scientific methodology, innovation, and progress have been added to the internal contradictions of the Ottoman world. As some, at the end of the 17th century, the Ottoman Empire had arrived at the end of its political power. This was, in fact, a question of clash of mode of productions, if we use the terms uh, Karl Marx has pointed out. A declining social system based on agriculture and war was historically condemned to lose against uh, another one animated by trade and discovery, meaning the ethics of an unchanging world against the values of newness, invention, and progress. Nevertheless, at the same period, the first tendencies for reforming military technology and then other institutions, has opened the op Ottoman system, which was until then considerably uh, close to older, especially the Christian world, with a characteristic humiliating attitude. Uh, I, I, invite to, uh, I invite you to remember the famous letter written by the Suleiman the first, the lawmaker to uh, to the French king, uh, François the uh, First, he presents himself uh, during uh, lines, uh, dur during a, a paragraph, I am the king, I am the monarch of the uh, seven seas, uh, four seasons, etc., uh, with sublime words, it is a, and you, uh, Francesco. And this is the, 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 the unequilibrated, the, the humiliating attitude of the uh, uh, Ottoman um, regime uh, toward the uh, European forces. But at the 18th century, at the end of the 17th century, the equilibrium was reversed 
and uh, the Ottomans had uh, felt the need to explore Europe, to, to explore the force which uh, won them. So, <clears throat> and uh, nevertheless, at the same, uh, uh, sorry, um, by this token, a relatively complex urban scene has emerged in main cities where commercial activities links to European centers and functional specializations increased. At the same time, successive wars, constant economic crises, unstable social environments created a general need for peaceful social life. Thus arrived a series of urban planning moments and the rise of a new lifestyle which challenged the world conception based on a religiously oriented sobriety and the unimportance of the actual life, subliming the after death. Although this was not an overall social change, the burgeoning of such a new perception affected different strata of society at different levels. Music seems the most comprehensive means which carries out the changing social tastes and expectations, as well as it represents a complete historical decorum of sensitivities. Indeed, artistic production and its aesthetic references. So I'm a little bit late, I, I, I'm afraid, and I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> artistic production in its aesthetic references began to change starting from the entry to the 18th century, reflecting therefore a more moving urban life. Wherever commercial activities increase, and give rise to complex exchanges, the values according which social logic is shaped are adjusted in terms of modernity. We won't pursue a discussion on philosophical meaning of modernity here in the limits of a short talk, but we should at least underline that modern is not an exclusively historically situated to the European exp experience. Instead, we should rethink the modern as a tendency of separation between the world of relations and the world of institutions. Due to the progressive complexification of everyday life, as a result of commercial activities, social organization is realigned on secular, rational, standardized, and worldly conception of the world. These are tendencies which are not states, but tendencies which, are, which also encourage the emergence of an urban social life and the spatial reorganization fitting to, fitting to it. Relatedly, we observe similar changes in the Ottoman context, though the economic circumstances were not the same. Among other characteristics of modernity, worldliness uh, shows best the cultural milieu in which individuals discover their subjective reality in an objectified organization. It is also the sign of relative abandon of a fatalist and religious perception of the world, while replacing it with rationally conceived criteria and values. The rise of an urban life at the eve of the 18th century seeded the premises of modern tendencies in Ottoman world. Thus, the public space became the scene of individuality and worldliness, as well as that of the power. Music in various forms, spread out into public space as the sonic lead to the spectacular reconfiguration of the social. Um, despite cultural differences between the industrializing Europe of the 18th century and the pragmatically changing Ottoman society, 
The coming of modern tendencies caused similar social phenomena, such as the emergence of an urban, urban public space. Indeed, the meticulously conceived urban planning projects realized during the Tulips era fashioned uh, a spatial but also symbolic delimitation of a new public space. Consequently, the physical reconstruction of the city, Istanbul in particular, implied the birth of a new matrix of science through which not only a relatively free floating of the individual bodies was made possible, but also, and more importantly, new values associated to them proliferated into different circles of the social life. Therefore, a worldly conception of the life sparked out among high or middle classes in different forms and intensities. Urban planning was not only conceived uh, according to functional necessities of the urban organization. Instead, the reshaping of the urban space was majorly oriented by aesthetic concerns. Yet, this desire to make urban space ordered, systematic, and but in the meantime cosmetic, was the crystallization of slowly growing modern sensibilities. Such a material transformation of the urban space, even in limited areas, is akin to a rationally conditioned worldview. As its projection into the world of inter intersubjective relations between individuals, rational thinking, or at least a slight incline to it, can release, as in the example of the Ottoman case at the beginning of the 18th century, a relative distancing to the values of traditional structures which favor an idea of individual as non-emancipated from the com community, a religiously shaped perception of the life, and therefore a precarious existence under the absolute will of God. Instead, with growing modern ambitions, the urban be individual bega began to become a relatively autonomous subject, negotiating life's meaning in his or her faith, and looking for the ways of being in this actual world, which implicates delivering him herself onto the social space as a unity of experience of this, this worldliness. In other words, the physical reconstruction of urban space inspired the idea of being a subjective expression and an actor of unattended encounters, therefore adventures, as Georg Zimmel put it out, the, uh, the eminent um, philosopher of modernity. The sufficiently easy living individual appeared in the Tulips era, in the newly constructed and semantically redefined public space as a quasi-volatile unity of action. Public appearance, besides the traditionally traced paths of being, such as the private space for women and the limited commercial or administrative sphere for men, was a kind of defeating the long-lasted curtailment of the individual expression. The immediate ground onto which the individual expression projected was the quest for life's pleasures. Poetry and music were two principal artistic domains through which a hedonistic life conception is represented. The cultural spirit which animated the Tulips era is most concretized in several domains. Traditional handcrafts had some influences from this urban movement. It is possible to argue that the arts such as tile making or miniatures are conceived by artists 
through shapes and drawings more colorful and moving. As for the miniature, which is caricature-like fine imaging invented by creative artists who would escape the anthropomorphic representations ban, according to Islamic principles, the figures became more moving, the scenes more realistic, drawn in a style reflecting the everyday life's interactions, the themes more oriented to trace life's pleasures with an implicit eulogy for it. As it has been observed in the Enlightenment imagery, in France particularly, a desire of returning to nature has been frequently chosen in the miniatures of the 18th century. Vast landscapes with flora and fauna, scenes of haunting, aesthetically arranged gardens, where happy-go-lucky individuals passing their leisure time in such a peaceful environment, accompanied by alcoholic beverages, fruits, and various meals, were the preferred topics treated by miniature artists of the 18th century. New techniques have been searched and invented as part of the innovative spirit, which is a characteristic, characteristic of modernity. As a well-rooted tradition, the Divan literature, based solely on poetry, has acquired a new scope in the Tulips era, especially under the quill of the poet Nedim, exclusively concentrated on urban scenes, promenades, promenades, fantasies of pleasure, flirt, carnal desires, implicit praise of homosexual <coughs> encounters, in ironically and allegorically described love, etc. Among the preferred urban buildings uh, and neighborhood, Nedim takes hammams, gardens, promenade plains, fountains, taverns, boat trips, sumptuous houses, etc., as the very decor of his frivolous narrative, mixing reality and fantasy. This is indeed the opposite discourse of a divan poetry of past centuries, where we mostly discover love in terms of adoration of God's will. In such ancient divan, divan poetry, even love for a human being is a metaphor for mystic experiences. While all descriptions of beauty implicitly indicates the virtue of an individual life, which has only value if the human being dedicates him herself to the love of God and a sober life conception consistent with it. The poetry of Nedim can be considered as the poetic landmark of the Tulips era. Another artistic domain where meaningful changes have occurred is music. The authors, who analyzed the modernization process of Turkish music, mostly defended the idea that, movement, uh, that this movement was ineffective because it has been triggered out by reformist, elitist, up-to-down projects in Ottoman period, as well as in Republican era. These too much cliched approaches are made of carbon copy-like argumentative content. They criticize the modernization process in music because they assess the European music has been imported in the Ottoman Turkish milieu as just an imitation act and not as a consequence of a social need. Nevertheless, this well expanded a priori, a priori argument has several problems. The most important discrepancy is the fact that such criticism takes the coming of the European music itself in Ottoman uh, territory as object of study, instead of analyzing the transformations of one observes in Turkish makam music itself. The latter entered a phase of palpable process of change from the beginning of the 18th century. Um, 
Beside the technical mutations Turkish makam music has been submitted to, such as the reduction of makams, shortening of rhythmic cycles, its social functions changed when it became a question of public events rather than mystic experiences lived in close circle of friends. On the other hand, music became the carrier of worldly feelings and actions into this public space. Again, music played a role of spatial regulator by putting the form Şarkı, song, as nearly the sole form publicly appreciated and asked for. This means that music became a vector for lyrics, which reflected mostly feelings and scenes associated to frivolity, love, flirtish sayings. As the symbolic value of Nedim in poetry, Tamburi Mustafa Çavuş has been a typical representative of worldly attitude in music. Not only the lyrics have carried out a worldly perception of their life, but also the making of the sonic structure of the music have functioned as the premises of an urban popular light music, which means easy listening, immediately meaningful and rapidly consumable cultural products. Starting from the tulips era, Turkish makam music has changed through some important technical aspects, such as sound system, rhythmic patterns, usuls, written music, instrumental variations, um, performative value, etc. Finally, we can exemplify these changes in a worldly conception of life and the emphasis on the spectacle in the urban space is the famous 40 days long ceremonies of circumcision of the princes of Sultan Ahmed III. Suru Humayun, we call it. Imperial events were already celebrated publicly in the past centuries, but in this event occurred in 1720, not only a series of public spectacles have been organized, but also an overall extravagance dominated the whole urban space and consciousness. Music, dance, and poetry played a major role in these spectacles. One of the first submarines, yes, submarine, ever made on Earth in the form of alligator has also been used as a spectacle instrument during the circumcision wedding, as we call in Turkey. According to the witnesses, a strange object surfaced from the underwater. It is probably uh, the, uh, uh, on the Halic, uh, on the uh, Golden Horn. Its mouth, its hatch, has been opened and belly dancers appeared from the interior. Uh, this created a general feeling of fear, but also curiosity, joy, fantasy, and pure amusement, which is highly consistent with the underlying spirit of modern individualism, seek of life's pleasures, and a global feeling of worldliness. To conclude, um, the short historical period called uh, Tulips era marks out the beginning of modern tendencies in Ottoman social life. Starting from the beginning of the 18th century, a general political decline is dialectically in opposition with an enriching cultural life. The Tulips era is the first scene of signs of modern tendencies and the closure of a time where social life is characterized in a relatively closed worldview, highly conditioned by religious principles. In the meantime, the Tulips era is a moment of urban planning, a policy of reshaping of the space. The spatial organization, reorganization of the city instigated also the appearance of the individual on a symbolic sphere. 
uh, in a worldly conception of being. Consequently, the female body as a sign of modern tendencies, as Zimmel underlined, though it is certainly covered according to the social norms or more generally a sexualized body with inter without interest to its gender, began to appear on urban space as an attribute of worldly attitude. This is the reason why we made the assumption that the tulips era constitutes the beginning of the modernization process, not, not solely a series of up to down reformist movements, but also a sign of social change that has been projected on its own cultural production. Thank you for your interests, uh, for listening to my uh, presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. I, uh, I'm sorry, um, I would like to, um, to listen, uh, um, to play uh, some music uh, excerpts. Uh, so I, I forgot, I, I didn't forget it, but uh, I had reserved this section at the end. So uh, I would like, if you uh, uh, permit me, uh, Professor it's, it's, Chelikal, it's uh, I to give uh, two or three examples uh, mm -hmm. from different times, from different eras, um, to see, uh, to perceive uh, how the spirit it has been changed, spirit of era uh, has been changed. And with the uh, 18th century, how, um, a worldly conception uh, of the life uh, has uh, emerged um, uh, with the coming of a easy listening music, a popular urban music. I have a list for those who are interested. I have a, um, um, yes. Yes, um, <clears throat> I have um, uh, a list in here uh, on Spotify. Türk um, Müziği'nin Modernleşmesi, it is uh, in, in, entitled. Uh, my account is Aergur, um, so you can find there and you can play it. Uh, we will listen to uh, an excerpt, not the entire piece, but an excerpt from uh, the most, the oldest known example of, from one of the uh, oldest examples of the Makam music tradition. This is Sultan Velet, uh, uh, who is the son of Rumi. Um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, taksim in makam segah. So we will listen to the sound of uh, this world. This, this is uh, 14th century. Uh, so we will move uh, to the uh, 18th century little by little. <laughs> in a world uh, uh, where the um, actual uh, experience on this world is um, highly mixed with uh, religion, with uh, religiously uh, oriented, organized life conception. So uh, all experience are 
nearly or all experience of individuals on this world uh, are, uh, are uh, had to pass from a, a kind of religious uh, religiously conceived filter if you um, if you prefer to say it uh, so uh, the love is love of god uh, individuality does not exist uh, it, 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 and all the meaning, all the matrix of meaning in social life is associated uh, to the will of God, to the um, uh, to the um, religiously conceived uh, social sphere. So we go to the 17th century, the very famous the very uh, well-known Nevakar of Buhurizade Mustafa Utri. And so this is very long, 10, 10 minutes, and uh, we will uh, listen uh, 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 just an excerpt. As we see, melody is rising here. Melody with its uh, variations uh, is more present. Melody is a kind of the sign of the individuality, individual expression. Uh, of course, in at Sultan Velet's time also, in music, there was um, um, melody, but melody was much more emphasized, much more characterized, ha has a particular character and much more moving in this era. Uh, so we, we perceive a, a kind of movement uh, to, um, uh, to a more moving society, but not yet. Not uh, this is a period of passage. We can even argue um, that this period, such kind of musical expression, is in parallel uh, with the um, Baroque style uh, in, uh, at the same time, which exists at the same time in Europe. So uh, there are more ornamentations in melodies, more movements, um so there is a change there is a tendency to change uh, again uh, ali ufki which is a, a polish or origin uh, um, ottoman person and um, uh, musician musicologist of, of his time and, and a witness of his time uh, um, due to ali ufki's um, uh, score, um, score, um, uh, scores uh, due to do his observations. We know uh, a repertoire of uh, of this time. As you know, uh, the Ottoman music was not a written music, so uh, we 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 have lost a large part of the heritage. Uh, Ali Ufki is one of the persons who. Uh, we are um, um, in debt full because he uh, registered the music of his time. Uh, because he, he was an European, uh, he used a, a, a European notation system uh, to, to notate the music he listened to. Uh, it's a very famous uh, song, Uyan Gözlerim Gafletten Uyan.
Or Kantemiroğlu, a Romanian origin uh, Ottoman. More and more, we we we, we find uh, melodies with uh, or ornamentations uh, with more uh, co um, with contradictory movements. Uh, so the idea of contradiction, uh, the great movements, uh, the great intervals, and uh, come to the um, Turkish makam music. And finally, at the beginning of the 18th century, we find another composer, as I uh, said in my presentation, as the uh, very equivalent of Nedim in poetry. In music, we find Tamburi Mustafa Çavuş, which uh, who uh, suddenly, nearly suddenly, changed the uh, music perception, music conception, uh, at least in urban circles. As you can observe, as you can hear immediately, the first feeling, the first um, uh, um, what we sense here uh, uh, at first sight is the joy, joy uh, a joyful conception uh, of life, so uh, a worldly conception of life. Joy is uh, always associated with modern tendencies, laughing. Uh, a joyful character is is uh, reminiscent of modern tendencies. Maybe we can hear. Unfortunately, the uh, the songs from Tamburi Mustafa Çavuş are not with lyrics on Spotify. Mm -hmm. I will change uh, the. I will quit uh, Spotify and I will change now to uh, YouTube. We have here um, um, a version uh, uh, with lyrics of a very famous song, Dök Zülfünü Meydane Gel. I think it's enough. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to uh, to offer you a comparison uh, between periods, between eras, uh, how a, a sober, religiously oriented, a mystic uh, music conception became um, a joyful, disworldly music. Uh, so worldliness is a very typical sign of modernization. This is why I think that this this is the burgeoning. This is the the, the very uh, beginning of a, a first movement. Not I don't, of course, say I don't argue that this is the a total uh, passage, a, a total 
a complete change of uh, life world, but this is a, the beginning of tendencies of modernity. Thank you very much for, uh, for your interest, for your attention, and for um, having time for this, uh, for this talk. Professor Ergo, thank you ever so much for this wonderful talk full of uh, life's pleasures, full of music and combination of arts, poetry and sociology, of course. I'm sure there will be some questions from the audience. Uh, we have time for questions because I have questions, but I, I just want to wait for the audience first. Yes, participants, the floor is open to questions. First of all, students, of course. Do not hesitate. <laughs> Please, yeah. Maybe I can open the gate for questions. Yes. Uh, if I may. Uh, I've always found uh, earth of similarities between uh, the Tulips era poetry and the Cavalier poetry in English literature, because Cavaliers more or less lived at the same time and they wrote uh, in more or less the same styles and with the same philosophy, which is Carpe Diem being yeah. the fa famous one. And uh, do you think there were some sociological similarities between the two societies back then? Uh... I think so. It, 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 there, there were uh, much more interactions uh, in the uh, in these periods, um, pre-modern period, let's say, uh, than we we think uh, about them. So uh, even uh, interactions were um, slow. Uh, communications were limited. There were connections uh, between cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, the form um, suit, sweet, uh, in in Euro Europe uh, is very similar. What we call mevlevi ayini, mm -hmm. uh, because mevlevi ayini is composed of uh, what we call hane, haneler, mm -hmm. uh, hanes. Uh, every hane is indeed a, a dance ritual, and sweet what we call suite, uh, an orchestra suite, uh, is also a, a, a suite. This is why we, we say suit, uh, a, a, a succession, uh, we, we meet, a, a succession of dances, Almond, Badinery, uh, Gavot, uh, Menuet, etc. And uh, this is the same uh, in the case of Mevlevi Aini. Were they uh, directly connected? There were, there were certainly some influences, some communications, not very close as we have today in a globalized cultural sphere, but uh, there were uh, some parallelisms. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why I think uh, in poetry, in music, uh, there were influences. As we, did, uh, we come to, 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 uh, to the 18th century, these interactions uh, were much more uh, dense, much more uh, moving. This is why I think there are uh, interactions and parallelisms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Questions from the audience, please? About poetry, about music? about social interaction. I, I can ask one. Yes, please. Uh, most, please do. Okay. Uh, most of the examples of this uh, music in this pre-modern era in the Ottoman Tulip era was from Istanbul. And you mentioned Selanik, Selaniki, and Izmir. Are there any other cities or regions uh, of this Tulip era uh, music experimentation can yeah. be observed? Like Dimitri Jantemir was from Yash, northeastern part of Romania, but actually yeah. was captive in Istanbul he, for a long time. He came to Istanbul, yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, Istanbul was the uh, the, the very uh, uh, concentration of the uh, Ottoman uh, 
um, cultural sphere. This is the, this was the extract. This is the concentrated form of all the uh, Ottoman world. Uh, this is why uh, an important part of the uh, cultural uh, activities and newnesses um, uh, occurred uh, in Istanbul. But uh, when I mentioned the names of uh, port cities or cities um, at, uh, with high commercial activities, uh, I, I meant that uh, in these cities, when they began to interact with the rest of the world, with Europe or with the um, Mediterranean commercial um, web, uh, um, a relatively more um, more uh, rapid, more complex life began to emerge in these cities. But uh, the most important part of the cultural production uh, is, of course, in Istanbul. Istanbul is the nodal point of the uh, Ottoman cultural life. Um, uh, we, we can uh, argue that at the same time, of course, there is a uh, there is a plen plenitude of uh, local cultures, popular musics, certainly. But in Istanbul, uh, we see this the concentration of the new tendencies and the most concentrated uh, form of interactions. And so we, the examples we choose uh, are mostly from Istanbul, of course. Thank you very much for your color, for that interesting talk Thank and presentation. You. Thank you. I enjoyed it. <laughs> OK. Any more questions, possibly? Oh, we have a written comment here. I have no questions, but I want to thank you very much to everyone who contributed. It was a very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Zeynep Arutoprak. Thank you. Uh, please don't be don't be shy to speak up, Zeynep, with your microphone. <laughs> so it was a nice feedback, actually. Oh, we have yeah. Mujat here. Good. Good night. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Perfectly. Clearly. I, I actually want to ask a question. Uh, Please. I I want to run the, when we look at the, the current state of the Turkey, the current political and social state of the Turkey. Uh, I think we can say we can see the reverse of the um, tulip uh, era. <laughs> Because when there is a political uh, improvement, actually, I mean, uh, in a sense, not actually. Yes. Uh, there's a decline, a decadence in the uh, cultural sense. Because when we look at the, when we look at the uh, way of thinking, the mentality behind the uh, behind the political situation at the moment. Uh, they are against most of the things that are uh, taught as hedonistic, like drinking alcohol and etc. Yeah. So can we draw a kind of uh, traumatic social cultural uh, link between the tulip era to current era? Because maybe as far as the era, Yes. As far as I remember, as far as I, I remember, the tulip era was thought as the uh, era where the decline of Ottoman Empire started. So yeah. uh, I really wonder if there is a traumatic link between these two ages. Uh, I think this is why we think uh, we should think about the dialectical character of history. Mm -hmm. History is always dialectical. We we see in a in an event, in an era, in a, a context, um, maybe decline, or maybe uh, uh, some uh, 
uh, some proud uh, pride uh, to, from from some events as conservative Ottomanians, uh, Ottomanists uh, find out in the 16th century, well, idealized in 16th century, but uh, as I say, uh, everywhere, uh, the wonderful century uh, was also the wonderful century of Europe. This, this was the emergence of, the, uh, of a new economy, new, uh, new um, era, new technologies, etc. So uh, history does not, uh, is not a, um, a, a line indeed. There are some um, cutting points, there are some reversed movements, uh, there are some um, illusory uh, uh, landscapes um, in the historical um, flow. Um, I think we are situated as, first of all, uh, for the tulips era, I, I say, we, you, I, I had also said uh, in my presentation, uh, this is indeed uh, politically a, a, a bad uh, a period for, in the eyes of those who idealize Ottoman Empire at the 16th century, but uh, on the one hand, this is the political decline, on the other, culturally uh, enriching uh, period. So uh, every uh, movement is, um, it, it contains its contrary, it's the, it is one of the main uh, basic laws of dialectics. I think this is valid also for today. Uh, as we are um, um, historical subjects, uh, but mortal historical subjects with relatively uh, short life courses, uh, we, we want to see revolutions, big uh, changes in our life. Uh, unfortunately, history is not uh, history is bigger than uh, our lives, uh, so uh, we we are witnessing today uh, to a uh, to a period that we can call, uh, as you say, a, a kind of decline, a kind of uh, reverse movement uh, to modernization. But I think these this is. Uh, this won't be a, a continuous uh, process. This country, this culture has still, still the, the potential to produce the contrary, contradictory forces uh, to this uh, culture antagonist period. <laughs> <laughs> culture consuming for, uh, period is uh, also I think the COVID-19 pandemics uh, also contributed to this uh, to this uh, change of consciousness mm -hmm. at global scale in Turkey also we will see I hope in our lives but um, I am not so pessimistic um, because I believe that history is a dialectical process. Mm -hmm. Even at the, at the time of Tulip's era, it was dialectical because uh, th this, is, uh, this is not an idealized uh, period. Um, the, 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 I mean, the, uh, the Tulip's era. Okay, we, we observe some modern tendency, etc., but it was also the decline. It was also... Um, unfounded um, structural change, uh, a set of structural changes, etc. So uh, please try to think. I, I, I know that uh, for young people it is more difficult. Uh, in, in a play of Melih Cevdet Anday, Dikkat uh, Köpekvar, a young man, there is a character who whose name is Young Man, uh, <laughs> says at, at a moment, uh, I think a woman says, how, how pessimistic are you, young man? Uh, he says, 
uh, if I am not pessimistic at this age, at uh, which age uh, I, I will be um, <laughs> pessimistic? So uh, young ages are <laughs> more uh, more tendency to be uh, uh, pessimistic. I think you you have reason. Uh, you you you're, you're right. Uh, excuse me. I am speaking sometimes um, an English which is indeed a disguised French. So, uh, so sometimes <laughs> I, I make mistakes uh, of uh, uh, this guy is French. Uh, so uh, briefly, uh, please uh, be optimistic, and not uh, not only sentimentally. Please, uh, optimistic scientifically, philosophic, mm -hmm. and politically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you. Okay, we have one more written message here. Kübra Yörük. Kübra Yörük. Okay, while a dark and gothic attitude was followed in the 18th century England, this situation differed in art of Ot Ottoman. Why did it occur? Hmm. Uh, this is a very good question, but very specific question. Uh, uh, I think uh, to answer this question, we should be, uh, I, I should be uh, an, an art historian, first of all. But I will uh, try to speculate. Why not? <laughs> um, in 18th century England, um, of course, we are uh, at the middle of um, industrialization moment. Industrialization um, passage from um, mercantile capitalism to industrial capitalism. This was a very traumatic experience uh, in in Europe, in Europe, especially in England, uh, because. Um, uh, even uh, in these um, territories where industry has been created, so we can, um, at first sight, we can uh, think that uh, this is very a natural evolution because England was the cradle of the of the industrialization. So uh, the passage to in, to the industrial society was very natural, as we think, as we tend to think in Turkey. Uh, we say that in Turkey uh, we we had some reforms uh, up to down. So th this is why we had some traumas, etc. But the same traumas has been uh, lived also in Europe. So uh, the 18th century, especially the end of the, the second half of the 18th century, the the beginning of the 19th century, uh, it are the um, are the very bright periods for the capitalists and not for the proletariat. Mm -hmm. You know better than me in the uh, novels of Charles Dickens or later uh, in France, Emile Zola, uh, we find found out a, a, a horrible misery, a misery uh, which is based on the exploitation of uh, child labor, mm -hmm. uh, extreme uh, working hours in very miserable conditions. So uh, this uh, the, 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 the metropolis is emerging at the t at the same time. Uh, metropolis, the, the not the, the 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 city of the Middle Ages, but a, a gi gigantic, a gargantuan. Uh, city, which we call now metropolis, uh, is a complex, um, uh, com a complex of contradictions, conflicts, uh, and uh, the, the the spatial and conceptual uh, positioning of the misery in in every forms. Uh, 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 this, uh, various forms of um, uh, traumatisms uh, 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 due to the passage from uh, country life, from an agricultural society 
to to the industrial society, um, peasants who worked for centuries on on the soil uh, became in a very short period industrial workers mm -hmm. and in very uh, miserable conditions. All these factors paved, I think, um, uh, a scene of uh, extreme misery. This is why uh, we we find uh, we found out uh, we find out a, 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 a gothic uh, some gothic uh, aesthetics in this um, in this period. Uh, in the same time, at, in the Ottoman Empire, uh, the reasons of the change were very different. But um, uh, there is a there is a need to to change uh, the, the, the way of life, the way of seeing life, the way of perceiving life. Uh, so this is this may be a, a, a one of the explanations uh, we can give to your question. But I am sure uh, an art historian, a philosopher, uh, a, 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 a linguist uh, can answer differently, of course. Thank you. Okay, any other opinions, comments, or questions from the participants? Okay, so uh, if there are no more questions or comments, uh, we would like to thank our speaker and our guest, Professor. Uh, Ali Ergur, thank you very much, Ojan, for joining us and for this wonderful yeah. presentation. Uh, you enlightened our minds. Uh, 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 new, <laughs> new horizons for us. Uh, so I will I will listen to uh, the uh, the music pieces in your list. I, I have taken my notes here. I have other uh, lists also um, uh, in every course. Um, uh -huh. I have lists associated to, to every course of uh, uh, of me, so yeah. you can find other uh, compilations. Uh, okay. You can enjoy it. I would like to to be with you physically, to meet Thank your you. uh, students, uh, all who listen us. Um, I I am very uh, grateful uh, to them. Uh, I hope one day I will. Have, I will have the chance to come to, to your department. Thank you very much. We will be honored to have you. Yes, uh, okay. this will be my honor. Yeah, as soon as the pandemic is becomes more, you know, not over maybe, but more comfortable. Yes. So we will have you in the department as well physically. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much for joining us. And thank you everyone for joining us to listen to the uh, seminar. So have a good evening. Good evening. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. -bye. Bye.